Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to machine learning. In this video, we will be talking about the analytical solution to the least squares problem. Let's jump right in. So in the last videos, we talked about that we proposed a linear method or a linear statistical model with parameters w that are our weights and our uh, basis functions phi of x. So phi of x are non-linear function, but we still call it a linear basis function model because it's linear in the parameters w. And our statistical model now also has a noise term that is epsilon n. So here we have the basis, the dummy function, omega uh, w0, and here we have our non-linear models. Now we can say we can get a matrix formulation from that uh, statistical model. So for our, for example, input y, uh, for our y1, so observation y, let's say this is our function, here we have x1 and here we have y1. We say that y1, y1 is equal to, these are our basis function, so this is here. So we have a one, this is always a one, because we want just the weight from here, or let's say it's like that. So we have phi zero times omega zero plus phi one times omega, sorry, not omega, w, w one plus phi three times w three. We want the weight, so the bias, to be just one. So that's why our phi of zero is one. Now we have a whatever function you want for phi one. This could be, for example, a squared, and this can be, for example, a cubed. So this is one, this will be x squared, and this will be, and so forth. And we'll go up to, for example, x to the power of four. And we do this for every observation. We have a one everywhere. Here we will insert or cube our inputs. So this will x, x3 is cubed, x4, x4 cubed, x5 cubed, and so forth. And this will be our x3 to the power of four, to the power of four to the power of four, and so forth to x5 to the power of four. So we are building a design matrix that we can multiply with our weights, parameters w, add some noise, and this will be our parameters y. Now we want to get rid of the noise term and only focus on this, these parameters that we are actually trying to find. So in the last videos, we talked about the error function. Let's have a look at that again. So this is our error function. That is a square difference between the observed value and the predicted value. So we have the difference of the observed value and the predicted value. We factor it out because we have a square. So it's my uh, y minus phi times omega and y minus phi times omega. Then we multiply that out. We insert basically the transposed into the brackets. We will get this term. Now we multiply each term with each other term and we will get this expression. We see that we have a this term and this term, and the result is a single value. So these are actually the same. This one is equal to that. So that's why we have a two times omega w transposed phi transposed and y. And we are basically left with our error function that now looks like this. Now we have to derive our error function with respect to our parameters w that are here, here, and there, set this derivative to zero, and this is how we get our optimal parameters so that our error has is the as small as possible. So we want to minimize our sum of squares error function. So we want to minimize that function by changing our parameters w. So we take a derivative of this function that we had before. So this is gone. Here we have this term left. And here, because we have a squared term, we will get these two values. So we're left with this one. It comes from here. 
and this one is one and a half, we will get phi transpose phi is equal to omega. And this is what we call now is now our normal equation. We see that we have some matrix here and some vector here. Now we can just take the in or pre multiply the inverse from the left, we will get of this term just left with w and the pre multiplied matrix is here. So this is now our optimal solution for our parameters w. So let's again, we designed our matrix with our functions, then we had our weights, we said that we have we expanded basically our error function, we took the derivative, set it to zero, and now we know which weights we should choose to get the minimal error. We call this matrix the Monroe uh, Penrose pseudo inverse of our matrix because it's the inverse of a non square, it's somehow the inverse of our non square matrix. Now we could ask ourselves, well, is it truly a minimum? And this is fairly easy to, uh, to check. So what if we add a little small w tilde to our vector? So we have our um, Taylor expansion of error of w is equal to uh, plus, or our expansion is the error at the w plus a derivative with w0, which is equal to zero, plus one and a half times omega transpose or double derivative plus uh, times our w tilde. And we see that this is our error function, uh, our arrow at the weight, uh, the parameters that we chose, plus some matrix that is larger than zero or some value that is larger than zero. And we see that if we deviate from our parameters, it is actually truly a minimum. Now, what uh, again, what assumption did we make to get to that solution first is that we have a linear basis function model that our noise and thus our observations are independent and uh, identically distributed. So we have independence. Then we said that all of those independent variables or observations had the same uh, variance and the mean of our noise that was here is equal to zero. Maybe let's talk how about how we get this design matrix. So if we want, let's say we have some observations of X and Y, X and Y, X is one, two, and three, and Y is five, seven, and eight. And we propose a model that looks like seven plus, or now let's say like omega zero plus omega one x to the power of two and plus omega three, or let's just keep it at that. So a fairly simple function, omega one times x to the power of two. So now our basis function of f of x so we can get it to this notation. We want to get to this notation is equal to y. So we have to add a one. So it will be zero and omega one times our one and x squared. So this is our short for notation. To get the design matrix, we have to look at our values, so our x and x1 to x3. So phi 0, this is this one, this is our phi 0 is always 1. So we get 1, 1, and 1. For phi 1, this is our squared, so we have now to square our x. So this will be 1, 4, and 9. And this is now our design matrix. So we just inputted our values into our phi matrix and stack them, or we stack them in this direction. I hope this video gave you a better understanding about the closed form solution of our linear least squares model. 
If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Thank you very much for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.